And the counterintuitive thing is if you just ramp up volume, you actually might hurt that number. And the same thing with increasing frequency, that might actually increase that number. Increasing the overall specificity of training without reducing the volume, which may have some sort of recovery cost, may decrease that in the course of six months. It's an interesting shifting of the goalpost from the perspective that the optimization game to optimize that number versus just the total number of sets that I can complete with high effort and targeting the target muscle is entirely different. So what do you think about now like we're outside of the bands of what the data can describe? Because mm -hmm. I want you to think about someone that's interested in long-term strength development, which I think should be your focus. Are you doing periods of really piling on the volume for long-term development? Purely if I'm if I'm anecdotally talking about this again, scientists hat off, just totally, totally <laughs> saying that. I, I think so. Like yeah. I th I think ultimately the way that I think about training these days is, and we've talked about this, but it's essentially entirely input based. And so I'm trying to set up a training program for an individual to maximize the inputs that I think drive the adaptation that we need right now. Mm -hmm. And so for a large majority of the year, when we're trying to develop strength capacity. I think there's kind of two primary inputs there. The main one is just the amount of hard quality work that you can get in, in the relevant areas that will increase the strength capacity. So that's basically your kind of standard hypertrophy block. So you think about the types of training that are going to maximize hypertrophy, probably gonna be higher on the volume spectrum, probably gonna be higher on the proximity to failure spectrum, might be manipulating some other variables to make you be able to tolerate some more work, slightly higher repetition ranges, slightly less specific exercise selection, et cetera. Um, you might need to do an occasional phase where you're trying to get in shape kind of to tolerate those 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 workloads but in general yeah an off season to me is you're essentially trying to push yourself to perform as much quality work over that given time period which isn't the same thing as maximizing your weekly set volume yeah. that maximizing the volume completed of, with a high quality over this a six month period may result in you doing moderate volumes for the entire time period as opposed to doing the 52 week uh, 52 set experiment for four weeks and then burning out. But yeah, I, I think periodization to me is very strongly indicated from practical experience, but also kind of the way that I conceptualize the data. And then when you kind of shift into that strength expression mode, the goalpost kind of shifts to, hey, this is about performance now. We want to have maintenance of the adaptations that we built. So you're still going to have some quote unquote hypertrophy work, capacity work, et cetera, to maintain those adaptations as best you can, maintain the size of your engine, but then you're trying to manipulate the training to drive the car as fast as you can. And I think purely from the data perspective, I think that makes sense from my conception of the data if you view it conceptually. But I also think if you layer on practical experience and, and what high level lifters have been doing for a long time and what they do today, I think all those things kind of track in line with one another. And yeah, I think it's really just about shifting that bias slightly to kind of maintain a given adaptation and then trying to maximize it once it's time to do so. It sounds to me like you kind of almost, you, you conceptualize it as like this purple line between the two in the sense that during some periods, you're going to bias towards the hypertrophy line. And in some periods, you're going to bias towards the, the strength line because this allows you, so lower volumes allow you to potentially prioritize variables that maximize specificity in the short term. Is that, is that fair characterization? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's the way that I think about it is kind of the power lifters line, in my opinion, is like the middle <laughs> mm -hmm. because you're going to have periods. Again, this um, orange line, 10.42 weeks. Keep that in mind. If you buy into hypertrophy contributing to strength, again, even in those 10.42 week studies, the data is still compatible with hypertrophy contributing to strength, as we pointed out. But we would expect that that contribution would be quite a bit more over longer time durations. Which is why the correlation is not super strong. Right. But it's there. So what that leads to is basically just a shifting of emphasis and ultimately a, a decent bit of periodization in my view. Nothing dramatic, yeah. right? And the way that I view it is like, okay, far out from competition. I can't, I, I'm, I'm trying to build this athlete up, right? If this athlete is 109, has a, let's say they're 200 pounds at, you know, 20% body fat or so. If they want to like level up as a lifter, let's say they're in year two of training, they want to level up as a lifter. They're going to have at 20% body fat, they're going to have to way more. They're going to have to increase their lean body mass. So I'm going to lean into to training that I know is going to build them up, right? When I'm thinking about long-term development. At the same time, I know specificity matters in terms of their sport if they're a power lifter. So I'm going to do that to the point where they can still get decently high quality training with the main lifts. And when I say quality, that means fresh enough going into this session to perform pretty dang well. And the training is split up 
across the week in such a way that they can maintain good quality over the, like within the session, right? So they're not doing 12 sets of squats because by the time you get to set 12, it's like, all right, what are we really doing for practice purposes and skill development purposes? So you, you basically have enough to maintain decent quality. And then if they're eight weeks out from a competition, now I'm starting to think about, okay, we can only do so much in terms of build this athlete up. We're not going to fundamentally change their body composition. I'm probably still investing a little bit in that. We want to at least maintain their adaptations. But now I'm going to really make sure that that specificity component is is maximized in a way that they can tolerate. And often that looks like just a slight shifting of the dial between these key variables of volume, proximity to failure, frequency to some degree, and to some degree... Exercise selection. Exercise selection. Am I missing anything else? There's probably some other things. Yeah. I mean, the, the simplifying thought I just had is like, it really is about, you know, the dosage of training of certain qualities in both cases for hypertrophy and for strength. For hypertrophy, that's like very high quality training, close to failure, targeting the target muscle, et cetera. You know, you want to try to maximize that within your recovery capacities is what it seems to suggest for the most part. Diminishing returns, obviously. For strength, I think it's the same thing. It's just what volume means is different. To mm-hmm. me, now it's talking about these very high quality, highly specific exposures. And the counterintuitive thing is if you just ramp up volume, you actually might hurt that number. Yeah. And the same thing with increasing frequency, that might actually increase that number. Increasing the overall specificity of training without reducing the volume, which may have some sort of recovery cost, may decrease that in the course of six months. So mm-hmm. it's it's an interesting kind of shifting of the goalpost from the perspective that the optimization game to optimize that number versus just the total number of sets that I can complete with high effort and targeting the target muscle is entirely different. Yeah. <laughs> and particularly when you have to use fixed constraints like squat bench deadlift, certain exercises. So yeah, I think it's it's interesting to to look at this and kind of think about it more holistically than just the the project itself. But yeah, it's it's definitely been a, a good thought experiment.